11 American State Department officials in Uganda received calls and texts via Apple's iMessage. Some didn't answer the call or view the text. They didn't click links or download attachments. It didn't matter, though. The messages and calls infected their phones with a spyware that circumvents security on both Android and iOS and obtains root or jailbroken privileges. With that level of privilege, the spyware can basically do anything. It can read messages, listen to calls, view pictures, access any app, view GPS location, view contacts, log keystrokes, use the camera and microphone, and of course send all the data to the spyware operator. The American State Department officials' phones were hacked in 2021. Based on current cybersecurity trends, you probably think Pegasus is a Russian or Chinese malware. At this point, Pegasus was already suspected to be involved in multiple murders of journalists and human rights activists. It was also known to spy on Americans and our allies. We'll get to that and who created it towards the end, but first let's start from the beginning. The first iteration of Pegasus spyware was engineered in 2011. Years later in 2016, the iOS exploit that Pegasus used was discovered after an Emirati Arab human rights activist was sent a phishing text with a link. According to the Citizen Lab organization and the security company Lookout, clicking that link would have jailbroken his iPhone. The discovery sent shock waves throughout the security and greater technology community. After Pegasus was thrusted into the spotlight, other reports started coming out. The news organization, Lapras Na, then reported the government of Panama is suspected of using Pegasus in 2012. The New York Times reported a 2013 record of the spywares used by the United Arab Emirates. Back then, Pegasus was installed using typical boring phishing tactics that exploited a vulnerability in the iOS kernel. By 2019, Pegasus operators were exploiting vulnerabilities in apps like WhatsApp and iMessage. The exploits could install the spyware by merely sending a text message or calling the victim's number. This is referred to as the zero-click exploit. It is believed that the zero-click exploits were first developed and released in 2016. The first records of their use is in 2016. Google, Apple, WhatsApp, and other application developers are constantly scrambling to patch the zero-day vulnerabilities that Pegasus exploits. Citizen Lab's investigation found that the zero-click exploit involves exploiting vulnerabilities to command the target phones to connect with a download server. Here is the link to our video analyzing the zero-click exploit. It is also believed that operators have installed Pegasus on target phones with network-based attacks like using rogue cell towers to spoof cell signal, as well as compromising cellular networks. The security community still does not fully understand how Pegasus works, nor do they know all of the vectors, vulnerabilities, and exploits that Pegasus operators have exploited. Here's what we do know. Pegasus uses very little RAM processing or storage, which makes it very difficult to detect on the phone. It is installed on the RAM with a few processes in storage. More recent versions of Pegasus seem to only reside on the RAM, making it even more difficult to detect. Pegasus uses very little bandwidth. When it exfiltrates data, it often spreads the transfer over days or even weeks to avoid detection. Pegasus operators are able to delete the spyware after they exfiltrate and dump the data they need. Since network traffic monitoring and logging is very uncommon with mobiles, Often the only evidence left is on the phone's activity logs. With the exception of one bug in the Pegasus deletion that can leave trace amounts of data. An Amnesty International investigation found that Pegasus utilizes a sophisticated command and control infrastructure to send commands and deliver exploit payloads. To conceal its activity, the command and control infrastructure uses a complex network of proxies, high port numbers, DNS servers, and domain names with randomized subdomains and URL paths. This network is called the Pegasus Anonymizing Transmission Network. It is believed that Pegasus is on the fourth or fifth iteration of the command and control infrastructure. The security community believes that when Pegasus spyware loses contact with the command and control servers, it self-destructs. Over the greater part of a decade, it is believed that thousands of government officials, journalists, business people, activists, academics, and politicians around the world have had their phones infected with the spyware. Would you be surprised to hear that the company that created Pegasus Spyware made Time Magazine's 2022 list of most influential companies? Pegasus is engineered and sold by the Israeli company, NSO Group. They are a private cyber offense firm owned by the London-based private equity group, Noel Pina Capital Partners. They exclusively sell to governments with the approval of the Israeli government. Here's a map of the governments that have likely used it. Many of these governments don't have the best record on human rights and use it to target dissidents. NSO Group is suspected of selling Pegasus to Bahrain. 
While it changes from time to time, Reporters Without Borders ranked Bahrain's human rights record as the fourth worst in the world, ranked only behind Iran, China, and North Korea. Amnesty International, digital forensics groups like Citizen Lab, various government's intelligence agencies, as well as private firms like Apple and WhatsApp, have confirmed a growing list of over 450 victims. Many were found to have traces of Pegasus on their phone, likely in the storage or activity logs. Some of the previously mentioned organizations have signaled that the list would be much larger if Pegasus spyware wasn't so hard to detect. Some of the other confirmed high-profile victims include Finnish diplomats, France 24 journalists, a founding editor of The Wire, a Polish senator, the fiancé of murdered Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi, 34 Al Jazeera employees, and a New York Times journalist. In 2020, a list of 50,000 phone numbers that are believed to have been targeted with the Pegasus spyware was leaked. Jeff Bezos' phone is suspected to have been hacked with Pegasus after receiving a text message from the Saudi crown prince. It is believed that Mexican drug cartels use Pegasus to spy on journalists and activists. Investigations into cartel-related kidnappings and murders suggest Pegasus was used. NSO Group has denied media reports that Pegasus spyware is linked to the mass surveillance of journalists and human rights activists. After a flurry of allegations in 2021, NSO Group announced it will no longer be responding to media inquiries. They insist that all sales of its technology are approved by Israel's defense ministry and used to combat terrorism and crime. While Pegasus is programmatically designed not to work on U.S. or Israeli numbers, it clearly can still be used against any Americans using non-U.S. numbers, and a watered-down Pegasus variant was used by Israeli police to spy on Israeli citizens without a warrant. In a statement to The Guardian, the FBI admitted to purchasing Pegasus licenses in 2019. The FBI denied using the spyware and claimed that they purchased it for testing and evaluation purposes. They have since ruled out using it. In 2021, the U.S. Department of Commerce added NSO Group to the list of companies whose activities go against the national security and foreign policy interests of the U.S., called the Entity List. The Entity List contains companies like the Russian Positive Technologies, who has participated in ransomware activities and showcases hacking critical infrastructure at trade shows like this one in Moscow. The NSO Group has been the defendant in multiple lawsuits filed against it, including from Apple and WhatsApp. Frontline defenders and Citizen Lab claim the iPhones of Jordanian journalists were hacked with the spyware in December 2021, mere weeks after Apple filed the lawsuit seeking the injunction to stop them from hacking iPhones. After the Russian invasion of Ukraine, NSO blocked the sales of licenses to Ukraine and Estonia. All of these events have led to intense financial and political pressure on NSO Group. In the next video, we will dive into the origins of NSO Group, its business, how it has managed the controversy, and analyze the long-term implications of the Pegasus spyware.